on November. I'll start again. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this meeting of the Community Preservation Act Committee on November 7th, 2024. I'm calling the meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. We're meeting remotely via Zoom uh, as permitted uh, by the state and the town of Amherst. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and will appear on the town Amherst CPA website. Uh, I'm going to call on committee members so that we can be sure that we can hear you and you can hear us. Uh, we do have a new uh, member. We have two new members this year, but one who is in attendance. Uh, so I'll commence with a new member representing the Conservation Commission, Michelle stepped down, uh, Jason Dorney. Hi, Jason. Uh, forgive me if I didn't pronounce that correctly. No, you're correct. Thanks, Sam. Right. Hello. Hello, everybody. Good nice evening. to see you. Nice to And uh, uh, I guess other members, when you um, when I call on you, maybe for Jason's benefit, just announce your status as at large or a particular um, commission or uh, committee. Um, <clears throat> Tim? Yes, uh, Tim Neal. I am at large. And Sam, you mentioned your son, who uh, what tur just turned 20? 21, yeah. 21. My okay. oldest on Monday turns 52. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, it's like, what? So um, anyway, but I'm here and ready to go. Some of us are slow starters. <laughs> uh, Bob? Uh, Bob Saul, and uh, I believe I'm at large. And um, I'm here in Boston for the month because we have a grandchild that we are somewhat attending to. So that's my background. Uh, David Williams? Yes, um, I'm representing the Amherst Housing Authority. Thank you. Uh, Robin Fordham? Hi, I'm Robin, and I'm representing the Historical Commission. Uh, Katie? Hi, Jason. Welcome. My name is Katie Allen Zobel, and I'm a committee member at large. Did I miss anyone? Matt Kane is not able to attend this meeting, and uh, Lawrence Klutz, if I pronounce it correctly, who's the new member of the planning board, uh, contacted me. He's unable to attend as well. So I think we're all here. Um, we do have to have a minute taker for every meeting. I'm wondering if there's a volunteer to take minutes for this meeting. We do have the recordings we can work up. Um, I'm thinking it's not desirable to have a brand new member do such an endeavor at their first meeting. Uh, I see Robin has her hand up. Robin, would you like to or, or willing to? Do that? Thank you, Robin. Much appreciated. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm going to uh, turn to our agenda. Hopefully everybody received copies. Uh, every year at the start of a new fiscal year, uh, at the first meeting, we elect a chair and a vice chair for that cycle. The cycle runs from actually July 1st, we're already in it, through uh, June 30th. So I'd like to uh, start by opening up the meeting uh, to receive nomination for chair. I'd like to, uh, I see a hand raised, uh, David Williams. Yes, I would like to nominate uh, Sam McLeod. And I will chair. second that. We have a, a nomination and a second. Uh, are there any other nominations? I don't see any hands raised, so we can proceed to a vote, uh, voice roll call vote on the uh, nomination for chair. Um, I guess I'll start with uh, David. Williams. Can you hear me, David? Oh, aye. Uh, Bob, Saul? Aye. Tim? <clears throat> Aye. Katie? Aye. Robin? Aye. Uh, Jason? Aye. And I will vote aye as well. So the motion passes seven to zero with 
two absent. Uh, we the next I'd like to uh, open the floor for the nomination of a vice chair. Um, I would have nominated Tim, uh, but he had communicated earlier uh, this uh, fall that uh, he's got a lot of things going on and he would prefer, uh, if possible, to uh, not uh, be the vice chair just based on potential conflicts of commitments. Uh, so I, I'd like to nominate uh, Katie uh, to be vice chair. Uh, second. Second that. We have a second and a third. Uh, are there any other nominations? I don't see any. Katie, uh, is it acceptable to you to be the uh, vice chair? Yes, I see a thumbs yes, up. Yes, yes, thank you. So I'd like to proceed to a roll call vote of membership. I'll start the voting uh, saying aye. Uh, Bob? Aye. David? Aye. Katie? Aye. Tim? Aye. Robin? Aye. Jason? Aye. The motion passes seven to zero with two absent. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. <clears throat> the uh, let's move right along. I'll try this uh, cycle to be a little bit uh, more timely <laughs> in the meetings. Uh, hopefully uh, they won't run quite as long, but you never know. <laughs> but uh, please chime in if uh, meetings are getting late, as I'm sure you will, if they get late in the uh, the hour. Uh, the next item on our agenda is public comments. So I would like to uh, open the floor to anyone uh, who wishes to make a comment related to CPA or anything else. I do see a hand raised from Robin. Robin? Yeah, somebody's, um, I'm hearing background noise from somebody's microphone. Can we all mute? Sounds a little quieter now. Thanks. Thank you, Robin. So I'd like to open up the floor for anyone who wishes to make public comment. I don't, I see Jennifer Taub, our liaison in the, um, our town council liaison in the panelist uh, meeting. If anyone, well, I don't see any community members, um, but I'll wait 30 seconds or so. Uh, we always want to ensure that the community has an opportunity uh, to speak, whatever it is they wish to talk about. It's important. Wait a little bit here. Okay, so uh, no public comment to my uh, understanding if somebody shows up late and wants to say something uh, we, we should be able to fit it in the next item on the agenda is review financials our meetings we the presentations that we're going to be having today we referenced a slightly later starting time than we might have otherwise just uh, so we could have an initial conversation and also hear the any updates on our uh, current uh, financials? So, Holly, does this work for you? Yeah, hopefully. Oops. Hopefully, you can see my screen. I can see it. Okay. Um, it might be helpful to enlarge it slightly. Um, so, as the returning members are aware of at this point, um, we're really working on estimates for the uh, fiscal year 25. So the beginning balance in the CPA fund at the beginning of FY25 was $1.8 million approximately. We will receive um, about an additional $1.1 plus million in the um, CPA tax that is uh, on everybody's, or almost everybody's real estate tax bills here in town. Then we will receive a, a match from the state. This would be on the top would be our 24 um, CPA state match. We always receive it in the subsequent fiscal year, which would give us approximately $3.2 million um, of available budget 
for the CPA fund. We have voted $2.3 million of um, appropriations for FY25. So that would have an estimated um, year end balance of approximately $826,000. And then as we um, roll that number forward to FY26, and again, add in what we expect for a um, CPA um, tax surcharge on residents' uh, real estate tax bills, plus an additional match from the, um, the state in FY26, we'll be looking at approximately $2.2 million. Um, we do have debt service of about $638,000 that is currently projected um, for FY26. We can talk about those numbers um, in the next few weeks as we get closer, but some of those projects um, that we are projecting debt service in FY26 may or may not come um, actually due with the first payment in FY26. Um, I'm sure as many of you know, below is a list of the current outstanding estimated debt payments. Um, as many of you know, the Jones Library Project has been put on hold. Um, it may be starting up again shortly. So this 140,000 for the Jones Library debt may or may not begin in FY26. It all depends on how that um, project progresses. Um, similarly, with the Fort River um, fields at the new school, um, we should hopefully be into construction and um, the money should hopefully be spent um, but it may not be a first payment in FY26. That one could be delayed as well. Those things are just, you know, things I want to point out right now that this debt, um, current debt service schedule may change depending on timing. We won't know that for a little while still. So with that, um, from the approximately 2.2 million up above, less our estimated debt payments at this point, we have about $1.56 million to give out um, in new projects. <clears throat> the current projects as just simply as proposed are approximately $2.1 million. So we're looking right now at an estimated shortfall if we were to approve all projects as they stand of about uh, $600,000. So. Not terrible. It's been worse in the past, but uh, you know, right now we would be looking at a deficit if we were to um, approve everything as proposed. So, does anybody have questions on how that is calculated? Bob, uh, or... I see your hand is raised, Bob. Yeah, I I do, and maybe for Jason's benefit as well as mine, um, if you could, I don't re recall addressing a debt service issue in last year's CPAC. Maybe if you just can tell me how that's included in these proposals and where are these legacy projects from previous CPAC allocations? If someone give uh, makes a proposal, do they include a debt allocation that we then provide the debt service for? I'm, I, that confused me last year. Okay. Yep. So um, all of these projects listed down below were projects that the CPA recommended to town council and town council approved as a debt authorization. So um, basically we have approved all of these projects listed below. Um, you'll see like the Belchertown Road property, we're in the fourth year of a 10 year debt payment on that. The Kendrick Park Playground is these little numbers here. It's the fifth of five years. So the, that project will be the last year's debt payment. So these are all projects that we had previously approved. The first three are already um, you know, permanently bonded for, and those debt payments are set in stone. And you know, basically, we have to pay our bills first. We have to pay our debt first. So we have to take that off the top for previously um, committed funds. The four projects at the bottom, you'll notice they all say year one of an estimated 10 years. And depending on when the money is actually spent, when the project actually starts, and when we know that the money is going to be needed, we will not borrow for it 
until, you know, it's the town's policy, the treasurer's policy that we would not borrow for it until the project was completed or near completion. Um, so all of these are projected to start in FY26, but until, you know, FY26 is still a, a little ways away and until the projects actually start and the money actually gets paid out, we would not go out and, and start borrowing money. But they are all projects that we as the CPA have approved and recommended to town council and town council has approved them and authorized um, debt for them, authorized bonding or borrowing for each one of these projects. So at some point in the near future, um, you know, we will need to start paying for them. Okay, uh, Holly, thank you. I, I guess the only additional question is, is this just a fraction of the debt service and the rest of the debt service is provided by the town budget or is this all of the debt service? This would just be CPA um, debt service. I mean, the town right. obviously has plenty of other debt service, but these are just the ones that we um, recommended borrowing for. Uh, Jason, I see that your hand is raised. Can you tell us what interest rate we're paying for this debt? Um, well, because um, most of these are not actual debt payments yet, what we typically project is about a 4% interest rate, depending on the market. And then when we actually go out to bond, you know, that could be higher or lower. I can check on what the, uh, the three that are already out are. Um, interest the interest rates are but i don't have that handy right here i i have two questions for you holly uh you touch base on them but i when do you anticipate that or, or if we have already when do we hear from the state regarding the okay. given cycles match uh is that something that occurs between now and next month Typically, yes. We we quite often get our first payment in, um, I think it's around November. Um, so the estimated number up here for our FY24 match, we should be receiving in the near future. I would say before we get to um, making vote, yeah. before we get to um, voting, we should hopefully know that. Okay. And uh, another question regarding the debt service that you referenced, the uncertain projects. Um, is it, just for those who may be watching in the future, is it reasonable to assume <clears throat> that uh, we will not have these funds available unless we receive a specific communication from you? Uh, that is to say, when it comes time to vote, uh, you know, six weeks, a month from now, we should go uh, with the assumption that the debt service will be 638, 550, unless we hear otherwise, when we're considering? Yes. I mean, I, I'm hoping that within the next, um, you know, by the end of this calendar year, that we will know more on the Jones Library project. I am hoping we would know more on the region track and field project. I know they are really gearing up to try to get that started in the spring. So, um, you know, the possibility of the region track and field actually, um, you know, being spent and us needing to bond at least a portion of that in FY26 um, is likely, but I, I, we just don't know in, until the projects actually break ground, um, whether we'll need to borrow in a particular fiscal year or not. And I guess the last uh, question or comment, I see that you have a 10% minimum referenced uh, to the right of the state match and assessed local tax. Uh, could you communicate the uh, significance of that? Yeah, so the um, CPA says that you either have to spend or set aside uh, 10% of your estimated revenues in the three category um, in the category of housing, historic preservation, and open space and recreation are combined for the third um, 
the third category, and you you must spend spend a minimum of or appropriate a minimum of ten percent. So if we are projected to get in about one point three seven five million, it means we have to spend at least one hundred and thirty seven thousand five hundred in each of those three categories. Um, typically, our debt service um, just about takes care of that if these come if these come through um, as planned. Uh, but that's just something that we need to be cognizant of. If we do not spend that minimum of 10%, we would have to do a budgeted reserve. to res So so just for example, say we only had $100,000 of community housing proposals that we approved in this fiscal year. We would have to set the, the difference of $37,500 aside to be spent on community housing at a later you know, at a later appropriation at a later date. Uh, thank you. And I'll just add a comment that uh, some of the description or chart relating to the 10% minimum and categories can be found in the uh, CPA plan that's referenced on the town website for download. It's just a source of information. Um, <clears throat> I see uh, Dave Zomack has his hand raised. Dave, would you like to... Uh, uh, speak to us for any reason. Yeah, thanks, Sam. I just wanted to give a little more uh, detail on the track and field, which is a pretty big number. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Um, so, as Holly said, you know, we're 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 moving through the permitting process for that project quite rapidly this fall. Our goal is to have it uh, out to bid in January. Um, I see there on the chart estimated start two thousand. Oh, that's when the the uh is that for the project or for the uh, the debt service Holly? 2020 that, that would be for the debt service okay. so that would assume so that um we are, we are on track to break ground in the summer of 25 for the track and field now i just wanted to add that the 800,000 has not been approved by the town council yet so your recommendation this committee's recommendation went to the town council that will be that is on their agenda for their december 2nd meeting and right now, what staff and I are doing is we're we're trying to uh, uh, rustle up additional funding. The charge we got from the council and from from you all was, let's go out to the uh, hill towns, to the neighboring towns, to the regional towns, and and see what they're able to contribute. We've got a commitment of on, uh, a total of one ten from Pelham. Uh, um, Schutzbury is taking this up at their um, special town meeting on November 19th, and then Leverett will take it up in the spring. So our goal is to have uh, Shootsbury locked up if all goes well, and Pelham, Shootsbury is being asked for 136000 So those two numbers, if known by the time the council takes this up, may reduce the 800000 So just wanted to give you that. That number will not increase; it can only decrease based on what the uh, the uh, regional towns are giving. That's that's good news, Dave, and uh, thank you for sharing that. And thank you and uh, Doug Slaughter, I assume, and whoever else was involved in uh, reaching out to the other communities. Uh, I, it's a very important project, and it's it's great to hear that things are moving ahead. And uh, I'm certainly hopeful that. Uh, uh, things will come together. Uh, and so I know you've done yeah, please, a lot of work for this. Yeah, please keep your eye on the website and, wow. and social media and also, uh, you know, um, print media and online media for updates on that. But December 2nd is uh, the 19th will be Shootsbury Town meeting vote. And then December 2nd, the council will take it up, refer it to the FinCom, uh, and then it'll go back to... Uh, the council before the end of December. So we'll know what is that number, you know, in the next eight weeks. Wonderful. <clears throat> um, let's see. I'm trying to see if there are any other hands raised from committee members and or attendees. I'm not seeing any. Now, um, we have four proposal presentations. Um, and we have on the agenda, uh, Groff Park, Parks and Equipment, Mill River and War Memorial. Holly, um, 
does this scheduling make sense? Were there any requests coming in from presenters to shift this? I don't think it would be problematic if we were to, based on the, uh, I'm not seeing any community members. Yeah, right now, um, it, it still appears that the only person, the attendee, I just let in Amy Rusecki, who uh, the assistant director of DPW, assistant superintendent of DPW, and um, Nate will be, Nate Malloy will be presenting one project. Amy has three. She has very gracefully offered to let Nate go first, and then she will take up the slack. So if he'd like to move on. So if everybody is okay with it, we will switch the um, the first and the third presentations, I believe it is, and let Nate Malloy go first. And then Amy will take up the next three if nobody objects. Uh, objects. Uh, that would be, that would be fine. Uh, and Nate, you say is in the meeting? Yes. I'm not seeing him on the screen. Maybe that's how I have this theory. Looks like there he is. There he is. Hi, Nate. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you doing? I, I, I know you're busy. I, I can see it from afar. Not this oh. evening, just on a <laughs> right. basis. Thank you <laughs> for uh, taking the time to uh, submit an application and to uh, attend our meeting uh, after all the daylight daytime activities as well. So uh, that sounds great. And you're going to be talking about which proposal again, is it? It's the Mill River uh, baseball field. Baseball field is wonderful. So uh, we're, all, we're all, we are all ears. That's a tongue twister. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, sure thing. So, you know, I guess, you know, a number of years ago, the town of Amherst baseball had uh, applied for CPA funds to make improvements to the two baseball fields at Mill River Recreation Area. Uh, and most of the work was done. Um, I think there was a few things that weren't taken into account. Um, one is that as uh, you know, town property, it needs to be publicly bid and paid prevailing wage. And so that's something that you know, is now has been realized and needs to be followed. Uh, and then just the cost of everything. Uh, so especially in recent years with cost escalation, uh, there had been a remaining balance up until this year for, for some funding at Amherst Baseball to possibly do electrical work and put another dugout. Uh, you know, there's dugouts, shade structures at one field, there's none at the other. And there just wasn't the budget uh, and the remaining CPA funds to do that, to really fulfill what you know had been laid out um, probably like five years ago. And so, you know, the town said, well, we'll you know, we'll actually submit a new CPA proposal with, you know, with an appropriate budget to finish the work uh, that had been planned. And so, you know, in the proposal is uh, two shade structures, two dugouts, and then running, um, you know, doing all the electrical work to get electrical receptacles to the field, uh, two fields, <clears throat> at least one, and then to a backstop and, um, you know, to uh, the, the fence area. The, you know, the shade structures, the, there's a concrete pad there, there's already fencing, um, but it does cost a lot to drill holes. They're actually really big footings for those shade structures. Uh, even and if they're you know even a little different, it's just that to have a shade structure and have that be extend over the concrete area to provide coverage for the players. It's the, it's a pretty big uh, undertaking. Uh, and then the electrical work, you know, we're not at one point there had been discussion about could the town do something or you know and it it became confusing in terms of who you know if we split up tasks and so. Really, the idea would be that we would contract for all the work. So, you know, the, the trenching, the installation of conduit, all the electrical connections. And so, you know, it would all be handled, you know, with a town and Amherst baseball, but it would be through a contract uh, with an outside agency. And so that's what the proposal is really is, you know, these shade structures or dugouts and then electrical work and some utility work on the fields. And, you know, Amherst baseball has put a lot of effort into the fields in the last so many years. They had been. You know, the infields had been completely redone probably about eight to 10 years ago. And Amherst Baseball has a memorandum of agreement with the town. And so they maintain the areas with inside the fence and they have, you know, fundraised and through donated time and labor have maintained those two fields really well in the last, you know, five to seven years. And so, they, you know, their participation is strong and they'd really like to keep these two fields as a focal point for Amherst Baseball. Um, thank you. Nate, um, appreciate. I I'd like to open for questions. Uh, committee members may have. We did send questions out and receive responses uh, from one of your team members to the two that were asked. But I 
I have a question or a clarification. Um, the the pro well, Tim, you go ahead. I'll I'll let you go. Okay. Uh, I for honestly, I didn't get around to looking at the answers to the questions. <laughs> but my initial read when the project was first submitted was the total cost was eighty five thousand with a the shade structure of 35. I assume now that you've explained it, you're requesting two $35,000 shade structures. Is that correct? And if that's true, that's why the request is at 120. Is that right? Right. And so a few years ago, we had asked Taylor Davis to provide cost estimates. And so there's the cost of the shade structure, but then there's also the install cost. And so, right. So for two shade structures, you know, it would be, you know, it could be close to 70. We just want to make sure we have the budget to cover it. So, right. It's not, you know, one shade structure. It's, you know, two shade structures on the first baseline, third baseline. So the request is 120, which is for two shade structures and all the electrical work, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, Bob. Yeah, sorry. Um, just having some experience with these fields and understanding that they must be on a depreciation schedule with the town and also thinking about the way the softball fields just really sort of went over the edge of no return. Um, is there a plan to maintain and slow down the depreciation? Is there a way to do that by doing annual maintenance on these new improvements? Yeah, so Amherst Baseball does, you know, they have a mower and machinery and they, you know, they maintain the fields, um, you know, really well inside the fence. And so, you know, there is the whole Mill River Recreation Area, which is a town, it's a public park. Uh, and so the town maintains that, you know, in the off season uh, inside the fence, but during the baseball season, it's Amherst Baseball. And so they, you know, they water, they, they maintain it. Um, they try to repair the fence. And so I think those two fields are really the two, um, you know, baseball fields in town. And so at one point there had been other fields, there could be practice fields, but with an out, outfield fence, uh, those are the main fields. And I think they are pretty well maintained. Um, I do hear you about the long-term maintenance. And so, you know, over the years, the town has applied for grants to make improvements to Mill River. You know, we, we always look at that, uh, whether it's for the baseball fields or other parts of the park. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're, we always consider that. Uh, but, you know, the overall like operating and annual um, budget for maintenance has been a discussion, you know, townwide for a bit now for all facilities. Uh, Dave Zomack. Yeah, I just want to add a little bit uh, more around the edges there. Nate, Nate is spot on there. We've had an agreement. We have an MOU, um, DBW um, in the lead uh, with, with Amherst Baseball. So they've, they've taken over all maintenance inside for the most part majority of maintenance inside the fence line um we we mow everything outside they do the weed whacking they skin the infields uh, they work with our dbw if if it needs irrigation things like that um they also dbw uh, um jumps in late in the year and takes down the shade structures because they can't stay out all winter um they can't they're they don't do well in snow and ice so we store them and then DPW puts them back up. Alan Snow and his crew put them back up in the spring and take them down in the fall. So it's a it's been a good, good relationship with Amherst Baseball. And it's uh probably one of our clearest MOUs as to what their responsibility is and what 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 is our responsibility. So I think this is trying to pick up where we left off four or five years ago with the initial project to try to just finish it and and kind of move on and get the electrical and get the shade structure. So we have mirror image, uh, basically mirror images at mill one and mill two. And as Nate said, these are the best little league fields we have. They're really the only ones we have that are official. Obviously uh, fields at, at Community Field and the middle school are the 90 foot diamonds. And, and you know we have improvements to make there too, but that's for another day. So thank you, Sam. Uh, thank you. Um, any additional questions from committee members? 
I'd just like to get my rotator cuff back from all that BP that I threw. Uh, it's not going to happen, Bob. <laughs> you know, I, I, I kind of have the same problem, actually. I threw Little League, and then in high school, I threw a lot of batting practice. And it's funny, my shoulders sore a lot. I'm not I sure, said, Bob. I don't think that's CPA uh, eligible, but we'll check with the state. <laughs> I threw out my one of the rotator cuffs just doing a quick little uh, – catch and catch game with my daughter i mean once they start to go they go <laughs> alas at least you got to use them bob uh <clears throat> i guess if there's no additional uh, questions from committee members uh, nate uh, thank you if we have other questions as we go forward we'll be sure to reach out to you and your team um and we'll go from there so thank sure. you so much yeah thanks everyone now, we have a few, three other proposals, all uh, arriving from uh, Department of Public Works slash Town of Amherst. And I see that uh, Amy Brzezicki is in the audience here. Uh, Amy, good to see you. Uh, I know that uh, there's a lot of work that goes into these uh, various proposals that uh, are for the benefit of the community. Um, it's a little bit earlier than we had scheduled. Is that fine for you for us to commence with uh, uh, in sequence your uh, presentations? I'm okay with it. All right, sounds <laughs> good. Uh, the first one that uh, we have listed, if this works for you, is the Grove Park Accessibility Improvements Design. Great. Can I? Am I able to share? My screen, is that okay if I do that? I believe so, how okay. are you able to? I am going to try, looks like, yes. Give it a shot, um, we'll see. There we works. go. Are you guys seeing my? Yes, yeah. now we are. Okay. okay, and we'll just get to the right, uh, the right slide. So, um, and I'll just show these quickly. I'm just someone, I'm a visual person, so I like to actually see things and show things. Um, so the first one talking about is um, accessibility improvements at Groff Park. Um, and really, this is just the first step in what will probably take a couple of years to actually make this happen. So the first step of it is the design um, of it. And um, what that entails, um, you know, we have the staff in house that can actually do the design, but we're going to need to survey the entire area. Um, there's delineation that needs to happen because we're right next to a riverfront. Um, and so just kind of delineating the boundaries of um, the riverfront and if there's any um, vegetated area or, sorry, border, what Dave's going to, Dave knows this better than I, I it's like beat. BVM, yeah, you know. Uh, anyway, if there's any of those areas, um, you know, if there's any sort of wetlands, those sorts of areas, we have to show all of those because that's going to impact permitting. Um, and then obviously we have to go through the permitting because that might impact some of the design as well. Um, and so, so looking at um, that, that's really the scope of this. And so a, a lot of the CPA request is the stuff that we can't do in-house, which is the survey, the delineation. And then like when it comes to permitting, we need to send out a butter notifications. And so I think there's a small amount for permitting that's really just to cover some of those costs that our staff wouldn't be able to um, do in-house. Um, so um, I talked about this a little bit, you know, this is really just a first step towards making Groff more accessible. And why this is really important to us is, you know, um, the town has the ADA transition plan. And so it's this goal to make all of our facilities throughout town um, fully accessible. Uh, right now, um, there's actually no way to get from Mill Lane to the recreation area if you were somebody who was traveling from one of the neighborhoods, there's no ADA accessible way. You could either walk down the driveway or you can walk on the grass, but there's no sidewalk that really brings you into the park. Um, and then there's also no sidewalk or um, any sort of walkway that brings you to that lower pavilion area. Um, I know there's actually existing funds to improve that lower pavilion area, 
um, that has been stalled out a little bit while waiting for a way to make that accessible. Um, and Groff Park, is, it's heavily used, especially the town invested so much funds um, over the last several years with the splash pad and with that, um, that playground. You know, I was over there today, and even today, there were a lot of kids running around and a lot of people just sitting on the benches, sitting near the river, um, you know, reading on a beautiful fall day. Um, so it's a very heavily used park. Um, and so, you know, opening the doors of um, making it a little more accessible will just make it um, available for all to use. So, uh, so this is the quick uh, breakdown, which is what I uh, presented in there. So the survey, uh, partly we're also, you know, you're going to look at these numbers and say, wow, you know, survey and delineation. We're looking at the whole property just because, again, while where we're looking at these pathways are, um, that's only a portion of the site, but we know that because we're right next to the riverfront, we may need to do some replication or some sort of remediation because of disturbing area close to the riverfront. We might have to do that somewhere else. And so we just think it's prudent to get the information on the entire site as we're trying to figure out where, um, where we want to what what might be impacted or what the best path is forward. So that's that's the quick breakdown on this project. So I can stop sharing and take any questions. Uh, questions from committee members. Katie. Thanks, Amy. I appreciate it. Thanks, Sam. Um, I just wondered, um, and I think you may have pretty much answered this at the very end, but if, you know, if we can't fund everything to the full extent, um, you said it would be prudent to do the whole scope and that's a $75,000 item, uh, you know, could you do partial and still be able to get the job done? Would it only end up being, you know, reduced to like 70,000 or, you know, 65, you know, something wouldn't really be a reduction. I, I just don't, I don't know costs around surveying and um, right. delineation. So I just wondered about that. We could certainly, if if those decisions have to get made, I'd want to talk to Jason Skeels, the town engineer, to just understand how, if we need to reduce the scope of the survey, how we might want to reduce that a little bit. Because um, like I said, we do want to still just give ourselves the options um, in right. case, you know, in case we need to do some sort of you know, replication or yeah. uh, mitigation or something somewhere else because we're working, especially that lower pavilion, it is, you know, right next to the river. Right, and so right by the river. We yeah. know we're going to be disturbing area and have to do something. So um, we could certainly it, sharpen our pencil if that's, you know, if that's something we need to do. Yeah, I hope it isn't, but um, right. it just it's helpful to know how complex it is and that it isn't as simple as saying, oh, well, we'll just reduce it by half, you know, and right. it's it's not that simple. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Tim. Uh, Amy, do you have any idea this would be the first phase? You, the second phase, I assume, is the construction, right? Yes. Any guess as to how much that would be? And would I assume that you would be making a CPA request for the next cycle? And approximately, because we, if we commit to this, we kind of are committed to the project. So how much might we anticipate for your next CPA request if, in fact, that's your, what your plan is? Yeah, and I, I wish I had a better handle on that number, but I think a lot of it is really going to depend on how we have to tackle the fact that we're so close to that riverfront. Um, and there's also, you know, kind of a slope. So knowing that it's not as easy... There's at least a slope going down to the lower pavilion. So it's not as easy as just going down, you know, in order to make it ADA accessible, you can only have so much of a slope. And so mm -hmm. it's going to have to be a much longer walkway down. And so some of those we, um, we we're just, we're not sure. Um, I'm not sure if this project either, and Dave, you might know better than me. I'm not sure if potentially when it comes to the construction, if, um, there are other options beyond CPA that might fund or partly fund it. Um, but certainly I, I would think that, that that might be a possibility moving forward. Dave, do you know if there's opportunities there? Yeah, it's a great question, Tim. Um, 
I think, as always, you know, DPW planning, conservation, we're always on the lookout for funding. So this project, I think it's a very compelling project for all the reasons Amy covered. Um, and I think we could we could look at uh, land and water conservation funds, park grant, which is a state uh, grant. We could also look at uh, DCR trails grants. Um, and of course, the capital, look to the capital plan. Um, as Amy said, I mean, if you haven't been to Grolf in the last few years, it is, you know, throughout the year, thousands of people use the new spray park and the um, and the playground. We have had a number of events happen at that lower level. Uh, maybe you've been a part of them and, you know, really got some sobering feedback that, you know, my grandfather or my father or somebody with a disability just can't make it down there. Now, the upper the upper part of the park, uh, at least the pavilion, the pavilion up top and the spray park, all of that, the restrooms are all ADA. But as Amy said, our transition plan identified that lower that lower tier as a place that people want to be. And it's challenging because we are that close to the to the Fort River. So um, we've got to get through the kind of due diligence here to say, can we build something? And it may not be in the same location that the current uh, pavilion is even in. But I think the short answer, Tim, is, yeah, we will be creative and go after other funds to match because, yeah, we would be back before CPA hopefully next year to say, here's what the cost would be. And Jason Skeels, our town engineer, would develop that cost estimate. Um, Amy also pointed out that this gets us a walkway from, I believe, Amy, correct, a walkway from Mill Lane to the upper pavilion and restrooms. Right. But we just improved the town over the last couple of years, improved the walkway at Mill Lane and then East Hadley Road. That's a beautiful, walkable, bikeable, um, you know, beautiful sidewalk, uh, uh, expanded sidewalk. So we're trying to get people to walk and bike there, particularly from the neighborhoods off of East Hadley Road. And we've made great strides. This is like the last leg. So thanks. I think one of my photos, and I forgot to point it out, was actually that walkway, you know, down Mill Lane across the driveway. And then after the landing where, you know, the you would go across the driveway to Groff, it just ends. There's a concrete pad on the other side and then it ends. And so this is, you know, looking to bring that all the way into the park. Uh, Jason. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, you mentioned the, the, um, survey for the entire property, um, for potential offsets or mitigation, how much could you potentially break down that survey for like, what is the survey for the actual riverfront and potential impacts to the river and, um, what is that like how, when you say the rest of it, like there's a lot of it that's just upland on the fields. Is that all included or is it just the the driveway coming in, the potential sidewalk coming in off of the road and then the let's just say the 200 feet buffer to the river? So we what we included in the cost was the entire site. So like I said, if we need to sharpen our pencil and cut that back a little bit, that that can be a discussion. Um, even, even where it comes in um, off the driveway, there's a good portion of that that's also, I think, technically within the riverfront area. And so we're going to have to, I guess the reason we included the whole thing is because looking at the offsets and the mitigation and that sort of thing that we're going to have to do, that's going to be pretty extensive. And so we just wanted the information um, for a much broader area because that 200 foot, I mean, it's a beautiful area because it's right near the river, but that 200 feet chews up a lot of space. And so to get outside of that, um, you're using a lot so, of, a lot of the rest of the park potentially. Yeah. As far as mitigation is concerned and, and I'm, I don't, maybe I should have this answer as the concom rep, but, uh, um, I don't believe, can you do mitigation in the upland area or do you have to do mitigation in the actual riverfront area or, or the wetland area? I became single at the same. If you're mitigating. 
wetland disturbance, don't you have to mitigate in a wetland? Dave, do you know? We're going to look at all those options, Jason. Yeah, I, I think by and large, we would need to do something with this proposed facility within the riverfront. For instance, I don't know, does some of this need to be per permeable pavers? Uh, can we move the pavilion and the walkway to the toe of the slope or close to the toe of the slope and get it farther away from, from the, the Fort River? Those kinds of things. Um, but I think we're not even there yet. I mean, I think Amy has been clear, we, we can reduce the scope of the surveying. We would definitely like to get because we don't have a survey, this park was donated, I don't even know the year, but a long time ago, we don't even have a survey, a full survey of the park. So we'd like to get as much of that as possible, including looping around behind the spray park and the um, behind the spray park and getting that whole back section along the Emily Dickinson Trail would be very helpful to, to get that information as well. So we're looking forward as Amy said, we've got a survey team out there. You know, if this all goes through, we get a survey team out there. Let's get as much as we can. If we need to scale back the scope a little, that's where we we're we're flexible. All right. Thank you. Questions? I, I guess I have one. I submitted the one asking about uh, safety related to the river. Um, and just as a, the thought that occurred to me is if we were having handicap accessible down to the pavilion, which is near the water, is it, is it often or sometimes the case that when you provide the access of handicap accessible towards an area near a, a stream or a river, that some form of fencing needs to be uh, or barrier needs to be placed. Uh, I don't know. It just popped into my mind as, oh, well, uh, I would like to have, I, I remember almost falling into that river when I was like right. three or four years old because I was chasing, my brothers were there. But it, it, when I started thinking of different types of handicap accessible, is, does that ever occur? I understand you're just doing initial studies, get right. an idea, and you don't even know where things might be placed. But right. No, it's funny. I didn't. I wasn't quite sure what you're driving at with that question, but now that you ask it, I, I get that. Um, again, we don't quite know, but I'll say even in kind of the preliminary town staff conversations of this project, Erin Jock was part of some of those conversations, and she was even mentioning that, like, you know, one of the things that we could potentially do with the design of this is putting up some sort of, you know, fencing or barricade or something more in an effort to limit how many places people are accessing the river because that's really eroding the stream and having an impact. And so this is, you know, an opportunity to do something else that would just kind of concentrate where where that's happening and limit these other, you know, other access points. And so um, it sounds like that something like that would be part of the conversation and it would have that residual benefit that you're talking about, about, um, you know, just safety as well. So. Um, yeah, all, all part of the conversation. And and yeah, thank you for reminding me about that. And and I should have added that to my response to Jason. But yeah, there is so much erosion. There's probably six to eight places along that stretch where people access the fort. I I fly fish a little bit, so I know that that reach pretty well. And so as we talked about potential mitigation steps, some of that was thinking. How can we, as Amy said, do ecological restoration, concentrate the use and or the access and maybe make the access safer for people, but also safeguard uh, uh, design something in such a way that erosion is is uh, minimized. So that definitely could be part of the, um, the uh, mitigation package. Um, and then from a safety standpoint, yeah, I think you're right, Sam it's more than a walkway and pavilion. It's like, what other things could we improve down there um, that would make sense? You know, people love to barbecue down there. You know, do we add additional barbecue pits? 
or picnic tables? What are what what are some of those amenities that we can do down there within a sensitive uh, resource area? So, I think the project scope has yet to be determined. It's definitely access, pavilion, safety, ecological restoration, and you know we'll come up with a number if we move forward with design. I just, I just have a comment. I have to say, with you know each submittal that comes in from the town for various proposals, often recreation, I have, it, well, it's already high, but I have an increasing uh, um, understanding and a respect for the volume of planning and detail that uh, town staff have to go through to bring these projects to the community, that uh, there's so much involved, and I greatly appreciate all the efforts that you have to go through and all the hoops, not just, you know, CPA, but all the different permitting, all the different uh, items. It's not just like bringing something at a the back of some, some individual's house. It's just, uh, it's very impressive to me, um, the extent of detail and planning and process that's needed to take these great ideas and actually make them happen. Uh, so that's all. I uh, thank you for uh, responding to the questions on this project. Are there any other questions from community members? Take a look to see if any hands are up. I'm not seeing any. So, uh, okay, are we good to go for another one? Um, we can push right through or we can take a couple minutes break. We're doing well time-wise. Uh, I say let's continue then. Uh, so Amy, uh, the next project we have on the list is, and it might be an appropriate follow-up, is parks and equipment. Yeah, I actually, I was wondering if Dave was uh, teeing me up with his response, some of his response on the last one. Um, about all of the, you were talking, Dave, you were talking about all the benches and, and picnic tables and grills and everything. So um, I, I appreciate the lead in. Um, so this one, you know, um, I'll say, you know, a lot of times when we're talking about projects, we're talking about, um, you know, what I, what I would call the sexy projects, right? And this is one that's just, you know, maybe a little less flashy but equally important. Um, and this is really just kind of looking at all the infrastructure and the equipment that support all of the great things at the parks. Um, so, um, you know, scope of it quickly is just to replace and enhance infrastructure throughout the different spaces. And I think my proposal actually um, gave a little bit more of a breakdown, um, but the reality is we're targeting several different parks throughout the town, we're, and we're targeting several different items um, at each of these places. So trying to make sure that this isn't concentrated at one place, but that it's something that will serve um, all of the various areas throughout town. Um, and again, it's an important reinvestment in the town's parks. You know, we do the big flashy projects, but this is one of the little ones that just um, is going to add and enhance all of them. Um, so the need for this, um, there's kind of two reasons that, or a couple of reasons that we need, um, or that we're asking for this. You know, one is that, you know, some of our equipment is getting pretty old and in pretty rough shape. And so here I've got a couple of kind of, it's almost before and after photos. You know, it's a, a photo of a bench at Mill River. And then uh, next to it is one at, Groff Park, you know, a new bench at Groff Park to the right. And then down below, we also have um, a picnic table. I think that's at um, Mill River. And then next to it is um, a table at Kendrick Park. Um, so just kind of showing some of the older style stuff that is broken down over time. Um, and so some of this is in poor condition. Some of these things, um, they disappear. Um, having wooden picnic tables at Kendrick Park, uh, that's those are light enough that a couple of college kids can carry them and they do. Um, and so, you know, some of these are also to um, put something that will be a little more permanent and will stay where it should stay for people to continue to use. Um, 
And so, you know, again, the breakdown, and again, here we have a couple of other uh, photos of some of these cafe benches at Kendrick Park um, and some of the, and the other style benches at, I think that's at Groff Park. Um, but we're looking at a range of, you know, benches, picnic tables, trash cans, planters, and grills um, throughout the different parks in town. So that's, I think that's the, that's the quick, the quick rundown on that one. Uh, Bob. <clears throat> uh, you know, the, this is the first time I've seen a CPAC proposal where the first question that popped in my mind was, are you asking for enough money? Um, only because there <laughs> seems to be a lot of places in town where this could really just enhance the whole field. So I'm floating that as a strong advocate for this kind of thing. I, I, I will never say no to that. I think certainly the town we were trying to balance what makes sense and also trying to, you know, some of the picnic tables or the benches that we have, they're still usable. They're fine, even though they're, they're the older style and they will break down at some point. Um, and so what we were targeting was either areas where there, the equipment there is in need of replacement, where, you know, areas where there's so much, you know, Mill River and Groff Park and Kendrick Park, there is so much use that if we put two more picnic tables there, people will use two more picnic tables there, and especially in the summer. So trying to, you know, beef up uh, what we have there. Um, you know, that being said, there certainly are some older style ones that, you know, in the next several years, we could be a little more proactive if there were additional funds to do that. Uh, thank you, Bob and Amy. Um, thoughts, questions, anyone? Sam, Sam could I just jump in? I, you know, yes. piggybacking on Bob's comment, um, we, you know, if, if this goes through at $90,000, it's certainly something that staff should consider bringing to you every three years or something and phase out some of this old stuff. I got a chuckle at Amy's first first uh, slide there of the benches outside the front of Mill River Pool. Those are original. I remember those in 1972. I believe that's when Mill River, 71, 72. Those are original. So they've We've gotten more than our money's worth out of those benches, and you can see they're very tired, and they don't meet ADA, and you know they're they're rotted wood. Um, you know we just and as Amy might have mentioned, I think in her proposal, what we've had to do over time without budgets uh, in our capital or operating is we remove things, and then they're just gone. There is no bench there anymore, as your your average bench might be two thousand dollars or three thousand dollars, and when we don't have it, we remove it for safety purposes or ADA doesn't meet ADA and DPW, you know, takes it out because we have to. So we've got some new benches there when we redid with CPA funds, the basketball courts, and those look great, but we need to follow that with replacement in other parts of our park. So I think this is a great start, but yeah, this could be an every three year cycle kind of let's replace another ninety hundred thousand dollars worth of, of benches so well the uh, photos that were provided were really helpful to me in uh, getting an idea of what we were talking about and when i look at the new benches or the juxtaposition against the old ones it's so clear uh just how beneficial they are and i want to uh, follow up from my own opinion on what bob reference that I've always thought that uh, benches around town are just uh, great ideas for uh, town projects. They make uh, all the areas, wherever it might be, so much more uh, inviting and usable for whoever, uh, but particularly for those who might need to sit, whether it's a, a young family, elderly folks. Um, and, and an aside, and I don't know that you could do this. Uh, water fountains. Water fountains, anywhere you can put them. I don't know if they qualify or not. Uh, bicyclists riding by, uh, reusable plastic. Uh, 
just a thought, but I uh, thank you, Bob, for raising that thought because uh, I concur. Uh, Jason. I assume this is true, but do these um, dollar amounts include the purchase and the installation? So these are all pieces of equipment that our staff would install. So it's just for the equipment itself. Okay. And are you getting quotes for the equipment or is this an estimate or how would you come up with the prices for like $4,000 for one bench? Those are, I mean, we went to the vendor that at least has that design um, that we've used, like we use that on the North, the recent North Common project and at Kendrick Park. Um, so we did get quotes on all of the, the various items. Um, if we were to do a bulk purchase like this, then, you know, Holly will tell you, you know, if I'm going to spend that much money, then, you know, I'm going to have to make sure that we go through the procurement laws and, you know, make sure that we either, you know, bid it out or that it's on a state contract or something like that. Um, but yeah, th those numbers are real and they did come from quotes for the, each of those specific items. And none of them include, none of that includes any, or you don't anticipate that like pouring a concrete pad and anchoring them down none of that is necessary in this nope. scenario. Right. Nope. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from committee members regarding the parks equipment? Okay. Uh, thank you, Amy. And uh, I say, let's uh, continue. Uh, uh, we're on a roll. Uh, the Town of Amherst War Memorial Bathhouse Replacement. All right, I am going to share, share one more time, maybe. Pardon me for one second, it is not, is it, oh, there it is, okay. We are good. Um, okay, last one. Um, is, um, oh, that title is a little different than what is in your, um, than the title of what I submitted. I forgot to update that. Um, but the, um, you know, basically, um, those of you guys that have been uh, involved in the CPA for a couple of years know that in uh, FY24, we came to you guys and talked about the um, War Memorial uh, bathhouse and the War Memorial area, what we're kind of calling the enhanced War Memorial area. Um, this is an area that, um, you know, if you look at the history, there hasn't been a ton of work and effort in that area. And so it it's, um, it's a very underutilized space, but it's a space that has great potential. Um, and of course, the biggest part of it is uh, the pool. Um, and while the town has put significant in, um, investment in the pool itself, um, you know, in terms of replacing uh, the filter about 10 years ago, um, right now we're in, um, we're in a process of redoing the liner um, and redoing the drainage in the pool. So we're, we're putting a lot of infrastructure into the pool itself, but the pool house that sits right next to it is, um, beyond its useful life at this point. Um, we kind of limp it along in Mickey Mouse, different um, improvements every year, but um, it's 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 reaching the end of its, you know, very long and noble life. Um, and so it, the FY24 CPA funds, um, you guys funded us doing preliminary design, um, which were, um, that is most of the way through. Um, the last bit, they're just waiting for us to be in a place where we would be close to bidding. Um, and last year, um, the CPA funded a chunk of money um, to go towards um, potential matching funds to be able to try to fund this project. Um, the, I think the need uh, over the year, or I guess in the last few years, I've talked a lot about the need. So um I'll, I'll go over this quickly, but, um, you know, like I said, that, that bathhouse is, um, it's in rough shape. It is, uh, you know, 75 years old and looks 75 years old. Um, 
And so um, the, the big goal of this is to try to have enough funds to be able to maximize matching funds to be able to get towards um, getting this project done. Um, so the preliminary design, this is just showing the, the quick preliminary design, which the pool is there um, where it was. Currently the bathhouse is right here. Um, and so it's looking at a slightly different orientation of the bathhouse, um, which has a couple of uh, advantages. Um, and, um, and then looking at all the potential site amenities, which again are um, still, still under consideration what the additional site amenities are. A lot of this is really focused on the bathhouse, which is the greatest need in this area. Um, the biggest challenge that we're having with this project is that the price tag is greater than we anticipated. Um, and which is similar to what we're seeing with a lot of projects right now. You know, you think about the library and you think about the elementary school in North Amherst Library and all of them, just construction costs are escalating. Um, so if we want this project to move forward, um, the bathhouse is, you know, roughly, it's roughly a $4 million project to make a new bathhouse and do the site improvements that would be necessary to be able to put that bathhouse in. Um, and so as we're looking at how that funding could potentially even come together, um, we have the CPA allocation from last year. Um, we have this CPA request for this year. Um, and then we're looking at using those CPA funds as matching funds for uh, potential grants, um, understanding that that will get us most of the way there, but then there is still likely a little bit of a gap that we're going to have to, the town's going to have to figure out how to fund that last, that last bit to get us across the finish line. So that that's where we're at. And that's why I'm talking to you guys about this project right now. So. Uh, thank you, Amy. Um, yep. There it is. Questions. <clears throat> uh, Jason. Amy, the project that you were showing um, includes like playground and everything like that. When you're, what you're talking about, is that that entirety of that or just the bathhouse and the necessary site improvements for the bathhouse? So, um, yeah, and I only having five minutes, I have a longer presentation about this and I, I cut out the slide that actually shows that there's during construction, there would be two different phases and the preliminary phase would be the bathhouse, the site improvements that would be needed around the immediate pool area. Um, and then the second phase would be um, the rest of the site. So the playground areas or picnic areas or um, whatever is decided to be there. Um, and that's partly why that's that's not fully known what some of those elements would be is because that's many yeah. years out at this point. So the 4 million is the pool house and the kind of immediate pool area work. Okay, thank you. Amy, was the uh, different phases that you referenced, was that uh, provided as a part of the application? Am I correct? that slide that you were referencing? Uh, I am not sure, but I certainly could, you know, I can provide these slides that I went okay. through and I can put that slide in. It wasn't- I, I seem to recall thing. seeing it, but if not, certainly. I think I think I present, maybe I presented it last year or I presented it at at least a couple of if, meetings. If you're able to check, that would be certainly yeah. helpful. Uh, Jason raised a good question. Um, Katie. Thanks, Sam. Um, I, thank you, Amy, that I, I just want to clarify one a clarifying question and and then a, a real question. One is um, the four million dollars you just said is just for the the bathhouse and sort of the surrounding area and not the playground, et cetera. So <clears throat> if you were to receive the full match, which is one point five million, there'd be left for that first phase about a million, just a little over a million from the town, et cetera, other sources. Um, I think I asked this last year, so I apologize if I, I'm just, I don't know those two funding opportunities through the state, the park grant, et cetera. I, I just wondered, 
is it likely to get the full amount or is it, you know, 50, 50, how does that work? If you apply, are you just likely to get it or is it a real tough, you know, it's tough to get really competitive. And, um, you know, just to give a sense of if there might be even more than a million it's, or more for the town to make up if that doesn't come to fruition. Yeah, I know that I think that's a great question. Um, and obviously, we don't fully know. Um, I will say the town has been pretty successful with both of those grants. Um, I Again, I, I have it somewhere and not in front of me, but I know we've been successful with several different park grants. Um, I, I want to say that maybe did um, Groff and Kendrick, I, I could be wrong. And then the land water grants, I think North Common was a land water grant. And I forget, there was another one, Dave's shaking his head. He probably knows exactly which ones, but I know of all of those projects, um, they had support from those various different grants. So the town has been successful. Um, part of the delaying of this project, you know, not applying for a park grant last summer was trying to make sure that we weren't asking for one every year to the point where we wouldn't be successful. And so part of it was trying to um, have timing that we thought would make us a little more successful with it. Balancing that with the need to, the urgency of getting this bathhouse replaced. No, I, I appreciate that. It's just it, it's some of these funds are just so easily, you know, you just have to apply to the state and you essentially can get it on, you know, right. and others it's like, you know, really tough to get. So I didn't know um, sort of where we stood, but that was helpful. Thank you. Uh, Tim, I see you, but I'm going to ask Dave Zomak first, if you have a, if you're raising your hand to follow up on the question that Katie asked, or is it a new? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. And, you know, Amy, Amy nailed all those things. You know, Amherst has a great track record with both the park program and the land and water conservation fund program. Um, we've gotten through both of those, probably a couple dozen of those through the years, going back to the 1970s, 80s. Um, you know, you can go around town. Um, the spray park and uh, playground at... Um, at Groff is were both park grants and land and water conservation. Uh, Cherry Hill Golf Course was purchased with land and water conservation fund. Mill River Recreation Area was purchased and developed with land and water conservation funds. So we've been very successful. I think Amy alluded to kind of the strategy here of you're not going to get those funds every year from the state or feds. We're, so we have to be strategic in, in how and when we ask for them. And, you know, is the project compelling enough? So um, the last one we got was probably we got a park grant. Oh, we also got a park grant for uh, the trails at Hickory Ridge. So that was the last one we got. Before that was Kendrick Park. And before that was Groff Park. So if you space them out a little bit, you're much more likely to get them. But with our population, with our environmental justice populations in Amherst, um, with our demographics, we're we're you know like Northampton, we're a we're a, we're communities that the state does like to fund, and we have a track record of performing. We don't we don't uh, we do these well. So I think. Amy is right. We just need to figure out what is that strategy. I don't think we would be likely to get a back-to-back -back grant from the state. I've never been a part of a back-to-back, -back, I don't think. You get one, or you might get two. You might get a park grant and a land and water conservation in one year, but then I've never known a town to get the very next year, one or the other or both. I think it would be in the year three that you could then come back around. So... Amy's right. The strategy is very important. Tim. Yes. <clears throat> Amy, could you go back to your slide eight desk on the, the funding of this project? You had a slide. John, I... Sure. Let me just see if I can share. Nope, you guys are not seeing it, are you? <laughs> not yet. Nope. Um, hold on 
one sec. I'm not sure why it's not giving me the option. While we're waiting for that, it yeah. just occurred to me that on the conservation side, I think we've gotten 35 to 40 park grants, or they used to be called the self-help grants. I think we've gotten 35 to 40 of them over the years. Um, and almost every conservation area you can think of was purchased with and through that program. Well, maybe Dave or Amy could answer this without showing the slide, but I was I had several questions. One, I wanted to just understand how much previous to this year the CPA has granted for this project. And I was making notes and I'm not sure they were actually accurate. I had uh, 500,000 in fiscal 24 and 750 in fiscal 25, is that right? It was uh, 200,000 for the design. I think I'm sharing my screen now. Which year was the design? Was that the 24 one? Um, FY 24. Yeah. So that was, okay. that was 200. And then um, FY 25 was 750 last year yep. was for completing the design, right? It was for completing the design and construction, which is essentially this year. It's the same, it's the same this year. It's building up, um, what we would need to be able to maximize the matches possible for the grants. Um, but none of that has been spent, Tim. That's as far as I know, right, Amy? That's yeah, all. the 750 has. I mean, the 200 is yeah. near, you know, the design is nearing completion. Um, so, I, what I, so for all intents and purposes, the CPA has granted for this project 200 plus 750. So that's 950. And this year you're requesting another 750 to complete the project. And my assumption is you're nec not the next year for fiscal 27, you're not gonna come back to CPA for another amount, or are you? I just don't know. Cause that's a lot of money for this one project. And I just wanted to have some clarity on that. Um, is that right? I Your your initial math on yes, you know, those, okay. those two requests that have already been granted and then one um, request for this year. Yes. Okay. Um, so if know, we you're, grant you're, the what you're asking is a tough question that certainly, you know, d you know, Dave and myself and Guilford and Paul and, you know, Ray Harp, we've all been struggling with, and I don't know that we have the exact perfect answer on what, where the additional funds come from. Okay. Um, to be able to finish out the project. So that is something we're working on identifying um, how we reach the finish line. And I guess the other question was, and maybe you don't necessarily need to answer it today, but at some point, as you don't know if you heard our beginning discussion regarding the financials, uh, with all the project requests versus the amount of money we have available, there's a shortfall of 600-ish thousand dollars. So in terms of shaving off some projects and so forth, sometimes we do that. We say, well, if you ask for 100, we'll give you 50 and so on. Uh, for that 750 ask, is there wiggle room or does that totally affect the overall grant if the if you need the grant and we say approve only 500 not 750 would that totally shoot the possibility of getting the grant uh like how critical is that 750 number to leverage those grant funds right so yeah, yeah no i get exactly what you're asking it's a good okay. question um my understanding with the two grants so <laughs> the land water if you're successful, you can get up to a million dollars for that, and you need to have a hundred percent in match. So we would need okay. to have one million to be, or yeah, we would need to have one million to be able to access um, one million there. For the um, park grant, I believe the maximum amount is five hundred, and you have to have. I want to say it's like a 40% match. I think it's like 220. I can I can get you exact clarity on this. Um, so that would mean in order 
if we could even try to max out both of them, we're looking at it's about 1.25 um, would allow us to at least max out. Now that's gonna give us a bigger gap that we still need to figure out, but at least having 1.25 from the two years would put us in a position to you know, potentially max out both of them and have matching funds to be able to access all of that. Okay, so last year we granted 750. Right. You're asking for 750 this year, so that's one and a half right. that you would use to leverage that grant. If we proposed less than 750 this year, that might get tough in terms of getting the grant unless you have other funds, right? That's what you're saying. Okay. No, I'm saying I think we need one 1.25. Okay. Is the minimum to be able to max out both. Okay. That Thank would you. still put us, you know, it, you know, we still we're we're gonna have likely a difference between even if we get those funds and the matching funds, and then the we're still gonna have a gap regardless. And so that would just make the gap a little bigger. Um, but what would be most important for us to be able to at least move forward and apply for these grants would be at least the 1.25. Okay, thank you. Not uh, Dave. Um, yeah, just a couple of, um, I think this is a good discussion. Um, um, first off, um, just to clarify, I think our park grant, Amy, we only need 30% from the town. So not 40. So it's 30, 70, 30 uh, for park grants. Um, so that's good news. I mean, we we need less. Um, but Tim, I think your questions are good. To some degree, Amy alluded, again alluded to, you know, staff is trying to figure out we all collectively, you know, and we meet on this and we discuss this, we're trying to figure out you know, how deeply the community cares about War Memorial Pool and the surrounding area. And, you know, we respond to, um, you know, our jobs are to kind of assess needs in the town and, and, and try to, you know, um, translate those, the, the desires of, of residents and taxpayers into, into projects and seek funding for those. You all probably recall some years ago when War Memorial closed because the liner was leaking so much and it wasn't safe, and we got a we got a park grant, I believe, Amy, to fix that. So and we may have put in some capital and CPA funds, but ultimately the you know the pool had and the pool house are linked, and so if we don't have a safe ADA pool house, we don't have a War Memorial pool. That's the bottom line. So how much does the community want War Memorial to stay open? Does it want, and Amy's, you know, been very good about differentiating. We have the pool house and pool. We have a design and it's not the Ferrari of designs. We have a design that is about $4 million for a, a pool house. That is really what we're focused on right now. As Amy said earlier, we have not designed all the other potential amenities around uh, that pool. We, we all, I think we all know that lower area of community field where the hill comes down and you have some very old playground equipment that probably we should remove. Um, but we have it, this doesn't even include the cost of what we might do around the pool. That's in addition to, so that's a future ask of CPA and it could be a future ask of a uh, of the park grant program and the land and water conservation. Right now, we're kind of hyper focused on how do we keep War Memorial Pool open, but we need a new bathhouse. So we're trying to create a pot of money at the local level to match outside funds. So we're trying to build up that fund so that we have a robust match to funds we seek. So that's in a nutshell how I look at it. But does the town have the appetite to invest that much money in in a new bathhouse and and keep the pool open, that's kind of the big question. Uh, thanks, Dave. Uh, Bob. Um, yeah. Uh, let me see. Even Dave, you partially answered my question. I'm thinking back to that big recreational plan that we saw last year. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Cold. Um, 
where does this fit in the sequence? I, I assume track and field is part of it, the soccer field, all the things that we've discussed are part of the kind of waterfall of the recreational plan, which I believe was something like 20 million bucks to get us up to the standard that we want to achieve. And so this is, is this big project number two? Is it big project number five? Where where does it fall in that sequence? And it's, two. it's number two. Okay, it's no, so this we, is number two. We feel, yeah, we feel like we're well along with the track and field. If all goes well with the council and the CPA funds you all recommended and the, the Hill Towns come in with their funding, we 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 feel like we have a very solid project there with a with a grass field and an eight lane track and then a, a practice field to the west. So that was always phase one, phase two, and this is partly driven by the age and condition of the pool and the bathhouse is phase two. And then there is a phase three, four, five, but that means moving fields and all of that. And that, yeah, Bob, that's somewhere down the road if the town decides to move forward, but staff is really responding to say, you know, how long do we keep, you know, we can put so many coats of paint or so many coats of uh, sealant on this, uh, um, uh, this this bathhouse. How do how do we keep it going? You know, and keep the toilets running and the showers going and 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 meet ADA standards. With yeah, a, I, I I get uh, maybe put another way, are are these two projects the the big thing that the anaconda has to digest? And then from here on in, it's sort of smaller projects that move through the pipeline. Are they of equal size? Interestingly, I, I think this is a pretty big nut when you when you when you put in you know some millions of dollars for a bathhouse and then a very big chunk of change for improvements around the bathhouse, then we can we can bite off some smaller pieces. For instance, as part of that, it's the Weston and Sampson team that did that out of the Boston. One of the uh, phases of that was to move the varsity softball field, which is also used by many other softball teams, down to the western corner of Mattoon Street, that's not millions of dollars to do that. That's, you know, some hundreds of thousands probably, but that's a smaller bite of the apple. Um, uh, making, uh, uh, making the 90-foot diamond at Community Field ADA, so people with disabilities, seniors, senior citizens, people with uh, mobility issues can actually view that that field in a in a re respectful and responsible way. That's a good chunk of change, but that's not millions, you know. So this is a this is a big part of that 20 20 million dollars and and that was over 20 to 25 years we really thought. So staff is just teeing these up, testing the waters does the community have the uh the appetite for it and Amy's job, my job is to is to tee them up and tell tell you all the realistic cost. Um, we're we're doing our jobs. We're we're advocates, but if the community isn't ready or the timing isn't right, then we may need to put some things on the back burner. We have a hard time, by the way, saying that. It's yeah. really hard to say that, but we have a lot of capital needs right now. Or four large capital projects. The track and field is a $5 million project, and that was teed up five, seven years ago. So we're getting things on the tarmac. How long they sit on the tarmac is up to you and the council and other boards and committees. Uh, Jason. Thank you. Um, Dave or Amy, do you have any idea how many people actually use? War Memorial Pool each summer? Yeah, and that, um, I think I put some of those numbers in the CPA proposal. So I didn't put that in my presentation tonight, but I'm, I'm calling it up quickly. Like, um, so there's a local swim team that uses the pool daily. So that's 15 to 24 users every day. There's a morning lap. So that's 30 to 75 users a day. Afternoon open swim, which is 20 to 75 users. And then evening swim lessons, which is 70 to 80 users a day. So, um, and both, you know, both pools are, um, 
like War Memorial concentrates more on the swim camps um, that Amherst Recreation do, does. So that's um, roughly 85 campers a day that are using that pool throughout the day. So um, there, there is a lot of use. I mean, I think ultimately the big question that we're all wrestling with and that, you know, it's not mine to answer is, does the town feel strongly that they still want two pools? And if the answer is yes, then this has to happen in order to continue to have two pools. And if the answer is no, that's okay. We just need to know, and then we can stop talking about this. Sure. Um, that That's a big question. And from, from, does anybody have any idea from the daily attendance roughly the money that it costs to enter the pool, is that covering the cost of operating the pool or is the town operating the pool at a deficit each year? I think it's pretty clear if we're really talking deficits or surplus, we, we the pools operate at a deficit. It's seen as a, you know, a broad benefit to the community. There are swimming lessons that are conducted there, a Red Cross swimming lessons, both at Mill and, and War Memorial. And Ray Harp, our, our recreation director, could say more about that. But we don't make money on the pools. Is it a law? Is it I, what I ultimately am kind of getting at with that question is, is it a very large deficit or is it like a few thousand dollars where if you potentially raise the price to enter the pool or the price for a swim team to rent the pool, uh, if you increase that, would that cover the operating expenses? I don't think it would. I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it's not a few thousand dollars. It's probably some tens of thousands of dollars that we, you know, again, we we try to, we offer a lot of scholarships for our summer camps. We offer a lot of scholarships for people who can't afford even the entrance fee to the pool. Uh, we have passes that are available at the Jones Library and the, the branch libraries. Uh, I believe we even have uh, passes that are available uh, at some of the nonprofits that serve um, uh, low and moderate income families in Amherst. So we, you know, we we price it to be as affordable as we can without, you know, without it being free. But uh, it's some tens of thousands of dollars, I believe, that we're we're operating in deficit um, because we see it as a broad community recreation need. And one in the in the design for the new bathhouse, there's a community room. Is the intention to rent that out and to potentially make income or bring revenue in on during the off seasons when no one is swimming because it's what three or four months that the pool is actually open? Uh Maybe so right now the the pool, it's it's essentially a two-month operation. It it opens towards the end of June and it closes towards the end of August. Um, so as we were looking at the design and recognizing the significant um, investment. Um, we are trying to make this a eight month facility, which means during the pool season, it's a pool house, but the rest of the time it can at least be a bath house or a, sorry, a, like a bathroom that people that are playing up on the fields can use or people playing in the playground can use. Um, and then that community room, I actually, I, I don't fully know if that is in the design or we're at least have enough of it that it could be added in the future in the design um, because that was one of the things that we were at least looking at stripping back um, in the design. But yeah, if that is there, that's um, looking at something that, that could be rented out and used for the camps. Mm -hmm. So. All right, and I just have one last question regarding the funding. I'm a little, I'm new to this, so please forgive me with some of these uh, kind of elementary questions here. But with the funding, you said the town match. So that that 70 percent coming from the CPA, and then the town matches thirty percent, or vice versa. Or... No, that's if you. CPA funds count as town funds. And so if you apply for a grant from the state or from the federal government, you a lot of times have to have, it's it's really a local match, okay. um, local matching funds. And so that could be CPA funds or 
um, come out of the town's capital or, you know, whatever. Um, and so that's, that's so what we're, we're town, looking for. Talking about yeah. CTA money. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, I will say some, I just want to add to like some of the questions that Jason was asking about um, funding. If that's something that you guys are curious about the exact breakdown on usership and funding and all of that, I know um, Denise, who's the aquatics director, she compiled a lot of wonderful information for this summer, um, this past summer. And so I think a lot of that information is available. I, I saw a presentation where she was talking to the recreation commission about it. So um, if, if, if that's something you guys are interested in, I'm sure we could um, request that and get that to this committee. I think it'd be great, Amy, if we, I'm sure she's got a couple of slides. It'd be great. Yeah. I, I would learn something, I'm sure, too, because I was. Yeah, I think you missed that meeting. It yeah. was it was illuminating. Yeah. <laughs> she also has been working really hard to bring more swim teams and um, really kind of utilize the pools. Um, yeah, our, she's really heavily. amazing, our aquatics director. She is yeah. just bringing so much new energy to our, our whole program. So that, if Ray can track that down, you yeah. know, if you want to shoot Ray something, that'd be great. I'm sure I'll we'd do love that. to see it. I'd like to make a comment related to the usage of the field of, of the uh, pool um, from personal observation. It's really heavily utilized. I had to get uh, both my kids swimming lessons and in Amherst, and they were offered at both Mill River and community pool. And, uh, you know, they were busy and we had to, have a timely reservation to get it done. Um, it also was a great place, aside from lessons, for the kids to go. Uh, and there were lots of people there. And growing up in town, I lived not where Dave was, but I lived in the center. So we would go to a community field, field pool. Uh, but also uh, middle schoolers, and even high schoolers would utilize that recreational area, not necessarily the pool, but that was a um, a gathering place of sorts, uh, just because, you know, kids hang out, they walk. Uh, it's centrally located. And one aspect of the potential, of the potential of the vision, um, if you attend the sporting events at all the different locations, restroom availability, uh, or the location of, of a centralized place for all of these games. Uh, that's actually a big issue. If you, if you uh, look at the size and the space of the different, you know, baseball games, football games, uh, recreational usage, then all the sports fields, it's really not to uh, going into the high school, even as a, as a kid, it's, it's a long trek and it's not very inviting and it's really not desirable. You don't really want uh, community members to be entering the high school building with kids around. It's like you know, probably safety. So uh, my, my point that I'm seeking to articulate, maybe not that clearly is uh, it's really heavily utilized and when Bob was asking about, you know, the importance, Anaconda, Marlon Perkins jumped to my mind. <laughs> um, that whole area is huge for the town. Uh, and if we're going to have new soccer athletic area with the new practice field, my understanding from what I've heard is that the lead time issue, the, the critical path issue, the one, the thing that needs to get done is a bathhouse, not necessarily the extras, which could be done at a later point in time, whether or not it can be afforded, you know, how affordable, whatnot. But my understanding is that that just like with the track and field, it's going to be there for 40 years. OK, you either do it this way or you don't. And the town, uh, fortunately, from my perspective, made a decision for long term planning Uh and I, I kind of see something similar. I don't know about the timing of how imminent. Uh, I know it's chugging along bit by bit, but I do think that the uh, pool house and that pool area is 
very significant. Uh, I do have a, a question. I saw that the on the initial chart, some of the side areas, which I don't think was what we're talking about here. I saw some basketball courts moved to the lower. Am I correct that that's a future potential, but the immediate, if the project were to go forward, basketball courts would be removed. Correct. There's no basketball courts, and whether it were basketball or pickleball 10 years down the road, we don't know what's going to be closer to Triangle Street there. Correct. Okay. Uh, the other uh, comment I had, uh, similar to Tim's, uh, I was looking at the chart you had in terms of the financing, and I saw 1.2, or I think you corrected it to 1.25, uh, is the town matching funds that are needed to max out on potential grants, 1.25 million. Um, the question arises, if we're looking at a $4 million project, and let's just say uh, you were able to gather from this cycle enough to meet that 1.25 million with the 750 last time, um, must the remaining funds be secured before anything happens? before you get the park grant, before you get the um, water water grant, or can you proceed with the matching funds with a shortage? Does, at what point does the project commence, uh, if that makes sense? Can, can the project commence with less than the full required funding? secured i'm not sure that it can okay. um and this is you know one construction project you know one whole construction project so yeah. I, yeah. I would i would say it can't okay yeah. and if it, our, our procurement office is not going to let yeah. us and if it could not commence if it could not commence then any recommended by cpa and awarded by town council funds would revert back to CPA. Correct. Uh, think, think of it this way. Um, we can't sign, the town manager can't sign a contract unless he, um, uh, he is assured by our finance director that all the funds are either in, in the building, if you will, or promised by a state or federal grant and and this this project is not as you reference the ferrari the cadillac whatever of options uh let's call it a a volvo <laughs> is is there a vw bug option <laughs> or equivalent in other words is this the project that really meets the needs for the long term and is needed uh or is there something that doesn't have a community room but has the bath bathrooms and is that even in the thought process or is it really not for this cycle to talk about i no i i think that's that is a great cr question and it's one that we've been wrestling with i think when we first saw the price tag we all kind of had a little panic attack and and so we have been sharpening our pencils and just looking at okay what can we strip down and how can we justify this to the town you know, um, because this has to happen and it's going to be a deal breaker if I'm bringing something that has all the bells and whistles when really we just need something that's functional. Um, the design that we have right now is stripped down to what's functional. Um, the The only place where there's a little bit of wiggle room is the one that it has right now does ha include, um, there's a little bit of space in there for um, like locker rooms. And that's for if the sports teams, you know, participating up on the community field level, use that as locker rooms. If we decide, that's that's the one thing that's in the building that isn't there by code, by plumbing code, by, you know, requirements, other requirements. Um, so we could tighten the space a little further with that. I don't know how much that gets us, but, um, but I will say we've done everything we can to try to um, bring this down because I don't want to be having this conversation any more than you guys want to be hearing that that's the price tag. I, I, I assume that in your planning process, questions were asked and it was determined 
that uh, closest to the hill, reorienting uh, the location of the building was the best usage of the space. Um, because once it's built, it's going to be there for 50 years, um, for sure. Um, was in that decision process, was there any comparison internally between tearing it down and building it where it currently sits versus tearing it down and putting it in the preferred location? Uh, in other words, was that a cost issue or just it needs to be where it's where the design shows it? That, that was certainly a conversation. Um, the biggest drive, well, there were a bunch of reasons um, to evaluate both those things. The biggest thing that kind of tipped the scale in one direction was if we were to tear down and build in place, then you're going to have one or two years without the pool operational because you can't have the pool without the pool house for, you know, for bathers to be able to clean and use, you know, use a facility. Um and so that was the one thing as we were evaluating um, all of the things, that was the thing that just kind of finally tipped it in one direction. Um, so I think cost-wise, they were they were pretty similar in both both locations. And, and must the design be finalized to receive the park grants and the other grants? In other words, the decision has to be made as to the destination for the new bathhouse in order to proceed with the grant applications. Yes. As opposed to here's some money, we're going to give you money now, see what you can come up with and go with the grant. Okay. Uh, thank you. I understand. Um, Sam, if not... I, could, I know you're trying to wrap up. I would just say that I know you're, 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 you have some time here. You haven't heard all the proposals, but I would also ask the committee to just think, I mean, really – your role is to assess the project, the project viability, the project, uh, the need for the project, uh, assess it in the context of the financials that are you're presented with and, and the information that staff presents you with and the need uh, uh, for the project in the community. Um, but I think Amy and I also don't, we're, we're not intending to put the larger referendum on you, the CPA committee, which is how much does the community value War Memorial Pool? And hence, we know we need a new bathhouse, but that's probably a decision for the town council. You make a recommendation to them on a certain amount of money. If you decide this is a worthy project, you, you put it up to the council and then the council needs to wrestle with that in this budget cycle um, as we try to put together a Essentially, we're trying to put together a fund that we can use to leverage outside money to try to build the the, the funding package that we need for the whole project. And again, we we our intention is not to put you in that hot seat to say, you know, does the town need a, a second outdoor pool? How much does a, a, the community value that? I think to some degree, that's the council's role, in in my humble opinion. Um, uh, so I just wanted to put that out there that we're not trying to put you in that decision or that awkward or whatever challenging position of of, of deciding on whether we need a, a second pool. I think the council is, is that is their role is, is to take a recommendation from you. And, and if we need a larger discussion of pool, then we will certainly bring in our recreation department and the superintendent and Amy, myself and others to make that decision or help them, is their decision. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, status quo is there are two pools, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Katie. I don't know if Jason was here before me. Oh, sorry. I... No, no, okay. Um, this is a very small uh, point, but I, uh, Sam, you said 1.25 and I think Dave, corrected us to say it's a 30 percent match on the 500 so i think it's 1.15 i just want to make sure that for the future if we have to be thinking about that 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 was on the record um is that right Dave? yeah yeah let's let's amy and i will confer on that I, i'm quite yeah. sure that the maximum on a park grant is 400 000, not 500 um we okay. will confer with, okay. with the folks at the state on that so it is 30 percent that's the Amherst match, 
but I believe the max we can get is 400,000. Um, that's the number that's kind of in my brain, but it's okay. like, so maybe, yeah. maybe I'll yeah. that. I think get those point, details. Point right? is we will get you clarity great, on great. that. Um, okay. Good, excellent. And I think that the other thing I would just very quickly tag on to Sam, what I think is certainly compelling is the bathhouse and the pool, definitely. And I think what is also compelling if there's any data whatsoever is around the use of the bathrooms for others, because I've been in those <clears throat> fields for many, many, many hours and days over the years. And it's people who are visitors coming and asking where to use the restrooms. It's really, it's a, it's, it's a bad situation. Um, <clears throat> beyond embarrassing, it's very hard. It's a hardship for a lot of people who are there. And um, so it's a welcoming thing. It's a, it's a health thing. It's all the, all the reasons. So if there's anything there that could be, that to me is one of the most compelling things to this project is having use of it outside of just the summer. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Jason. Um, I'd like to also kind of piggyback on something that Sam mentioned with the relocation of the basketball courts to the area that now currently appears to be the DPW building. Was there any thought about what potentially using that building and as a bathhouse and a new, you know, not just a bathhouse, but bathrooms where it's potentially separate from like entering from the pool? Um, or is that building, what's going to happen to that building? It appears it's going to be torn down and basketball courts being put there. But can that actually be reused? And, you know, even, again, I've not ever been in that building, but potentially more bathrooms as opposed to locker rooms, but just bathrooms or stalls, right? Toilets. And then a room upstairs that's a potentially a community room or something along those lines. Um, I, I I think you're referring to the, the Weston and Sampson 2019 study when you're talking about utilizing that area. Um, the Weston and Sampson 2019, like the strategic facilities um, plan, that looked at utilizing the space that currently uh, houses. That's our tree and grounds building. Um, so it's where Alan and, you know, the amazing crew that deals with all of the parks and commons and everything in town, that's where they operate out of. Um, unless we get a new DPW building anytime soon, that facility is going to likely stay where it is. Um, and so the more recent design that we did over the last couple of years didn't evaluate that area. It was looking at the area kind of below the toe of the slope between there and where you go down to tree and grounds and where the fence line goes all the way to Triangle Street. So it was looking at a much more smaller, limited space. Um, so I just want to clarify that. But um, give me a new DPW building and you can build all the bathrooms you want in tree and grounds. Is that a realistic possibility of happening anytime soon? I, I mean, I've heard talk about a new DPW building for several years. I would love that. You know, because <laughs> it's, and... it's not it. I, I don't think it's moving as fast as potentially we need a bathhouse at this location. Um, certainly by the time we're looking at outlying areas and additional facilities, I, you know, we'll, we'll certainly evaluate at that time what how realistic that may or may not be. But I, yeah. I don't think that's um, I don't know that 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 is going to happen in a time frame that it's relevant to the conversation about the pool and the pool house. Yeah. So then the it seems like the need for bathrooms here is very big. And the ask, I think, again, in my first CPA meeting, so. I think the dollar value ask is fairly large as well. Yeah. And, you know, with the operating in a deficit to operate the pool and everything, I understand that it's a community. I, you know, I want to make it clear that I don't necessarily think that this, everything that the town does or things like this need to actually, they're not money makers, right? There's things that are more important than making money. Um, but with the locker room design, you know, there's, so that, that older study is included in the presentation here. Then there's two designs for the building. 
one has a community room with a bunch of tables in it. One just says community room storage and has not much in it, but they both have locker rooms. Is there, is the need for bathrooms bigger than the need for locker rooms? And can the design of this be tweaked in a way that, you know, potentially there's more toilets and that can be used, you know, because if in the summertime, like there's only, in this plan, there's only six toilets in here. And if you have people playing on those fields, kids at the playgrounds, you know, a hundred some people at the pool is six toilets enough on any given day in the summertime. And then, you know, throughout the year, let's say there's a tournament or some, you know, whatever there's track and field going baseball. I don't remember my se the seasonality of all the sports. Right. But in theory, you're going to have more than one event at a time. Um, is the need greater to have more toilets? And would that be a better use of the money as opposed to locker rooms? I'll admit that, that that exact possibility is not necessarily something that was evaluated um, as we were looking at this bathhouse. Um, I will say out um, kind of on that upper area, but all the way out by Triangle Street, there is what we call the community community fields um, comfort station. And so there are bathrooms that are all the way kind of tucked in that corner. Um, so there are facilities um, that do service those fields, although certainly, as you guys are saying, um, that may not be sufficient or that may not be the closest and convenient area. Um, the way when that are they, they did, get, when are they going to need to be redone? They were done, I think, about twelve years ago. I feel like they were being built about when I started with the town. So and are they ADA accessible? They are around the building, but yeah, uh, actually, I think you can get from the pool. I I don't know if I don't uh, know if you can get from the pool and up, but I think from the upper fields because aren't they up on that same level? The other thing I would add, and these are all great questions, Jason. Um, the other thing I would add is during high school sporting events, uh, as Sam alluded to earlier, the high school is the restrooms are open; they have to be open. So there are restrooms in the high school when there is a football game. Uh, or a soccer game or whatever. So, but yeah, you bring up good points, Jason, is, you know, we're building a $5 million new track and field complex just across the street on Mattoon Street. Um, if this new building were built, those would be the closest bathrooms that are ADA to a new track and field complex. So there's a really compelling reason to do that, but we also have to meet code which is different. They can't just be bathrooms. There has to be changing rooms and changing space in that new building that are diff that are, are were held to a different standard in terms of code for a pool. So that's what Amy and her design designers are trying to, you know, weave through and make sure we we meet all of those. But that design includes external bathrooms that would be open during the swing seasons. But then we have to meet code. So the locker rooms, locker rooms for the pool have to meet a different code. So we can't get rid of those locker rooms. People still need to be, you know, uh, adults and children still need to be able to change to get into the pool. Yeah. And they, that might be a good thing. They could potentially be tightened up though, Dave. Like yeah. there's, they, I think when you look at the code versus how much they gave us, they gave us, I think, a little more space. Like that's the one place that I've always kind of said, gosh, if we need to shave a little bit of space, it's, you know, they, they built it with the code, but then also with like, if you have a team that decides to use this as their locker room before an event um, or before a game or that sort of thing. So if we're really looking at places that we have to start um, sharpening the pencil to make this happen, mm -hmm. um, that that might be it or maybe that's like you're suggesting jason that's you know maybe we have four you know four bathrooms per side rather than the three that meets the code just to try to serve that additional need um so you know all kind of possibilities at this point if if i understand correctly amy and dave at present you've uh, submitted a application 
uh, referencing design plans with some variables in it. And you have to have an idea or more than an idea of whether or not funding will be available to allow the town to max out on the grant opportunities uh, distinct from the gap funding, which <clears throat> is a town council decision. So our task is to look at the bigger concept and decide uh, what we think and recommend affiliated with it. Um, so I, I'd like to, uh, you know, we're getting close. We're really at time. Um, I, I think the responses and the questions that have been asked have been very uh, beneficial to uh, myself and probably to anyone who's here and or who might pay attention at a later point in time. Uh, I do want to reference that we can ask additional questions of Amy, Dave, and others if we wish uh, at a later time via email. Uh, we have a few more weeks of meetings for other presentations, and then we get into deliberations. But um, I believe the responses to the uh, very detailed questions that we provided have been helpful. Um, and I think some of the questions from committee members regarding the specificity of the financing and other things has also, have also been helpful. So I think we're better, I'm better informed uh, now than I was uh, an hour ago. Um, I'd like to move on unless there's a question of significance that a committee member feels they need to ask at this point in time. If there is, please raise your hand. Um, so Amy, I'd like to thank you for, uh, first off, for your efforts in what you do daily uh, and what you've done to put these proposals before our committee. Uh, and I'd like to thank Dave as well. Uh, similarly, uh, I have a recognition that grows every year in terms of the volume and magnitude of work uh, and efforts that you do. And so uh, I, I personally appreciate it very much. And I believe that the community does as well. <clears throat> um, I don't have any additional items that I did not anticipate prior to this meeting, uh, but prior to adjourning, I'd like to uh, ask Holly uh, if she has any comments, thoughts, or anything to add. Holly? Um, I actually do. I just wanted to respond to Jason's question um, from earlier. In the financials, um, I I was able to go back and look at the interest rates on some of those prior projects. So I can just quickly share my screen and pull that back up very briefly. Um, again, we work off of an approximate 4% estimate. Um, could be higher, could be lower. And on the prior projects that are shown here, the ones that are permanently bonded are these first three the Belchertown Road property, our interest rate is 3%, 3.02%. The um, Valley CDC project um, went out at the same time. It is also 3%. And this Kendrick Park um, project went out quite some time or a, a while back. We're actually only paying 0.6% interest on that borrowing. So um, good rates in the past, getting pretty good rates right now. So um, that that does help with the borrowing. But I just wanted to respond. I was able to look that up. Uh, thank you, Holly. Um, so I, I don't have any additional items. Uh, we do have a meeting scheduled for each of the next two Thursdays, same time, same uh, Zoom link and method. Uh, we have sent and posted the agenda for the subsequent meeting and the projects that we'll be presenting. Um, I ask that all committee members review the applications for the given meetings presentations uh, and review questions. And we certainly can 
ask additional questions after the fact if need be um, and go one step at a time. So without further ado, I'm going to adjourn the meeting at 8 11 p.m. and hope to see you all next Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, night everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Sam. Thanks. Good night. Thanks, Sam. Good night.